We are rather clever little machines. If you throw in enough food and leave us a while, eventually you get language, the printing press, moon landings, instant mashed potato, and Debbie Does Dallas. This is thanks to a nifty piece of hardware called Brain. It weighs about 5% of your body, but takes in 20% of your calories. Anyway, there is a problem. The software keeps getting updated every few years thanks to culture, but the hardware is exactly the same as it was back when we were savages. Upgrades to the human CPU take a few hundred thousand years, even for small bug fixes, because evolution is very, very slow. But these restrictions might all be about to change in our lifetime, and here is why. Quick version, this is Ray Kurzweil, he's a smart guy, he's invented lots of stuff you've probably used yourself, and he's written a bunch of books. Now he thinks human technology is getting better exponentially. That means it's not getting better year by year, it's doubling at how much better it's getting as it goes on. So if it keeps up at this rate, he thinks this century we're going to get to a thing called the singularity. It's a word borrowed from physics, and it basically means there will be a point when technology is improving so fast, you can't even begin to imagine what the near future will look like. Rational mini break. Before we get deeper into this, let's just admit if there's one thing we're worse at than not murdering each other, it's predicting the future. If you told a Victorian that in about a hundred years we'd all have this communications thing in our pockets that gives you access to all human knowledge, they might have said, flaming tallywags, what do you use it for? And if you're going to answer honestly, you'll say porn and cats. And quite a lot more porn than cats. In other words, we always expect utopia is coming, and what we usually get is smarter ways to do stupid stuff we've always been doing. Anyway, let's imagine Ray Kurzweil is right and the singularity has happened. Technology is improving so quickly we can't keep up with it. What does the world look like? Well, maybe we can answer that with an acronym, GRAIN. That stands for Genetics, Robotics, AI and Nanotechnology. And even if only one of these really takes off, that might mean the end of humanity as we know it. So, for example, if genetics gets pretty good, we might start redesigning humans. That means possibly removing stuff like mental illness, designer babies, or splitting into thousands of different species of humans. It may have already started. There's a very strange new technique called CRISPR, which means we might soon start editing the genes of human embryos. Please go and watch Kurskazart's video for a good explanation. Or there's robotics, which could revolutionise agriculture, and again, humans. Hey there, having trouble lifting stuff? Yeah, I am, actually. Alakazam, how about robot arms? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, amazing, thanks. And those legs look a bit tired, need an upgrade? Oh yes please, that would be fantastic. Abracadabra, robot legs. Wow, that's awesome, cheers. And are you tired of those silly biological genitals? What? No, I... I like my genitals. Please don't do anything to my gen- We can cut that little fella off in a second. What? No, there's nothing wrong with my- Hey, presto, robot schlong. Oh god! Or artificial intelligence might get big, but I think we all know how that one might pan out if it goes tits up. Or nanotechnology. Nanobots are little microscopic robots that hopefully will perform all sorts of complicated tasks and make copies of themselves. Just a quick doomsday scenario for you. Say you make two nanobots, obviously they make four in no time, then eight, then 16, 32, 64, and 128 until you could convert the entire planet into nanomachines by the end of the week, and possibly like the universe a bit later. So GRAIN, that's the acronym to remember, and it might mean the end of the world as we know it. Some of these technologies are coming and we're going to put them in our bodies. And if that happens to a large extent, are we human? Or are we dance? This is the neocortex. It seems to be the main part of the brain that separates us from the rest of the mammals, as we have such a large one, and it allows us to reason in an abstract way. Some people think what we're doing now with our technology is kind of building another neocortex, but made of silicon. We've already started outsourcing our brains to technology. When, and if, devices start being implanted inside the brain, it isn't technology anymore. It might be the next step in the evolution of life itself. And the humans using that technology won't be humans anymore in the traditional sense. We will have started on our journey up the intelligence ladder to the next step in our development. Or nothing might happen and the future will be incredibly boring, but that seems unlikely. Alright, real talk for a minute. We're probably mostly wrong about what the future will look like, we usually are, but if even 5% of this stuff happens, if, it will be bigger than the printing press, than the internet, bigger than fire even, and it might mean extinction or the birth of a new species of human, but one thing is for sure, if it happens, we'll get to see the beginning of it, at least. We might already be watching it without realising. There's no telling what we're going to turn ourselves into, but there's every reason to think it's part of a natural process. Just because it's technology that we're using to evolve this time, doesn't mean it wasn't always going to happen. This might be how species develop in the universe, first through biology, then through technology, and then something else entirely, maybe. The future we live in today was unimaginable to our ancestors, but at least we're the same species as them. Tomorrow's humans might not be the same species, and stranger than that, they might look back on our situation with the same regard we give to primates or even single-celled life. Genetics, robotics, AI, nanotechnology, and whatever else we invent might rewrite the rules of biology. 
Every step we've taken has been on the outside so far, exploring our planet, exploring the universe. It's different this time. This might be the first adventure that goes inwards instead, but we have a lot of bosses to beat before we can get to the next level. We've got doomsday weapons, deadly contagions, possible climate catastrophe, political tensions, and god knows what else. But if we make it through all that, if we turn into whatever new species we're going to become, it's probably going to be incredible. Our descendants might one day look back on this century and think how amazing it was that considering how violent and stupid we were sometimes, that we managed to do so much with so little. And that in spite of all the odds against us, we survived anyway and turned into something better and wiser, whatever that happens to be.